Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you all very much for being here. I hope uh, you all had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, before we begin the proceedings, uh, what you've been listening to uh, is one of Shea's greatest assets, the uh, mighty Wurlitzer, played by uh, Mr. Uh, um, uh, Christopher Cook. How about a big hand for him? <laughs> that is... That is one of the few instruments, uh, literally, in the world uh, that is here, right here at Shays. Um, Brian Higgins, as you know, is a great student, a very serious student of history. So it would seem to me appropriate to begin uh, these proceedings by quoting uh, Benjamin Franklin, who said that if you want to keep a secret with three people, two of them have to be deceased. Our purpose this morning is less about the announcement of Brian's appointment as president and CEO of Shays than it is about the process by which we got here. As many of you know, we are about to begin the celebration of 100 years in this building, our 100th anniversary. Um, as president and, and CEO uh, of Shays, our search committee, which was led by Dr. Tony Vasquez, and how about a big hand for Tony, who is right there. <laughs> Dr. Vasquez led the, the search uh, uh, with our board members, uh, many of whom uh, served on the search committee. Uh, we constituted that search committee with a number of other individuals from the community uh, who gave us we think a great perspective on what the next iteration of our president and CEO uh, needed to be. Our board was committed to one thing, and that was the selection, the hiring, the recruitment, and ultimately the, the, the opportunity to bring someone here that could do all of those things. Develop and maintain this building, stay out of Albert Nacciolino's way in the booking of Broadway shows, <laughs> create a diversity and inclusion and an environment where our staff could prosper uh, and be productive, and be committed to the future of this building and this operation, including 710 and the Smith Theater uh, as a cultural icon, certainly in downtown Buffalo and in western New York. We think we accomplished that. We went out and did a request for a proposal for a search firm. We had six responses. We selected uh, one, uh, the uh, Arch Consulting Group based in Boston and Chicago. They came back and had over 100 applicants from across literally the country, and in some uh, cases uh, internationally, for people that were interested in coming here. That group was winnowed down to 10 finalists. The search committee interviewed those 10 finalists and ultimately selected three for live interviews. Search committee and then the board talked to those three people. And I'm happy to tell you that the selection was, at the end of the day, unanimous. And so, uh, with great relief, with uh, with uh, great pleasure uh, and, uh, and my honor to introduce to you the next president and CEO of the Shays Performing Arts Center, Congressman Brian Higgins. Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The only thing I'm certain of is that they changed the speaking order. Um, first of all, thank you, John, for your leadership and your friendship uh, through this process. Uh, Mayor, Senator Tim Kennedy, uh, Albert, uh, uh, Anthony Conti. Anthony, I'm familiar with your work. I was in the state legislature, and Albert and I were talking earlier about how important 
the increase in depth of the stage by 40% was relative to making the Shays a leading uh, touring Broadway venue, not only in upstate New York, but all through America. So congratulations for your work and your vision and your presence of mind to do that. Um, I just want to, first of all, Lou Mostello is here. I just want to recognize Lou. Lou's a friend from South Buffalo. Lou has many acting credits with Seinfeld, with Mike and Molly. He's doing a show now, uh, Cooper's Bar, which is actually filmed in his home in Los Angeles. It's been picked up for two seasons on AMC. I think he's negotiating a third. And we should all aspire to have a TV show filmed from our backyard bar. <laughs> Lou Mostello, great to have you here, Lou. Thank you. <clears throat> I just want to say, Lou did some 300 shows off Broadway, including a couple of times here in Buffalo called Bartenders, which was, you know, six bartenders, six characters, uh, some well known in this community, Pat Ford and Eddie Brady, but it was interesting the perspective it gave you that something so localized can have such a universal message. It was about life from the perspective of a bartender. And 300 shows off Broadway, I saw it off Broadway, a great, great show. Lou was a bartender, his father was a bartender, and his grandfather was a bartender. So Lou, it's great to have you. Sean here? Sean? Sean Cole? Sean. Sean Cole, another South Buffalo guy with uh, many uh, credits. Uh, he's here to the uh, production of uh, Sean. <laughs> How are you? Uh, he was in uh, Michael Creighton uh, alongside George Clooney. He played George Clooney, uh, Clooney's brother. Uh, Sean would have preferred to have George Clooney play his brother. <laughs> but uh, great to have Sean. He's at uh, Road Less Travel down the street. And uh, great to have you, Sean, and thank you very much for being here. Um, so I was trying to make a connection between politics and the theater, uh, not easy to do. And I stumbled across a guy who I've admired for a long time. His name is Oscar uh, Eustace. Oscar is the uh, artistic director at the Public Theater in Lower Manhattan on Astor Street. And he lectures on the connection between theater and democracy. And he argues that the theater is important because democracy is important. And the theater is the art form through which our democracy was established. They were established at the same place, Athens, Greece, at the same time, at the end of the sixth century. So my connection is that I went back to my evolutionary roots, but I didn't think I'd have to travel 2,500 years to get there. So. Um, it's an important expression of who we are uh, as a society and as a people. I'm also Irish, and the Irish have a great literary tradition. In fact, it was the great writers and playwrights uh, that established uh, the Irish uh, uh, literary movement that provided the inspiration for the nationalist movement in the early 20th century. Uh, the Easter Rising, it wasn't soldiers that fought that battle, it was poets. They had beautiful hearts, but they got slaughtered. But they still had a deep sense of what it is uh, to be a, a visionary in a country that seeks to remove uh, an invasive uh, influence. Um, also, the founder of this beautiful facility, uh, Michael Shea. Michael Shea was born of Irish immigrants in St. Catharines, moved to the old First Ward, of Buffalo, ran a saloon on Elk Street, lived on Catherine Street. He was also an iron worker. And he had this vision about what a major theater house or several of them could mean uh, to a community like this. This was the final one. This was his opus. This was the Wonder Theater. And as you can see, it's beautifully uh, ornate. Uh, the other connections to the theater, uh, my dad was on the city council in the 1970s where this was scheduled for the potential of demolition. And the council 
uh, voted uh, to issue a request for proposals, uh, but then they voted in the end to give this over to the Shays O'Connell Preservation League, or the Friends of the Shays, which would lead the restoration. In 1978, Bruce Springsteen opens Darkness on the Edge of Town tour here at the Shays. I had the West Box with 15 of my closest friends. <laughs> Kurt Mangell, who run, run, ran the theater at the time, uh, came up, he was very, very concerned because we were a little bit exuberant, and I think he was afraid that the West Box was gonna fall off of the wall. <laughs> so, um, this is a, a great opportunity. Uh, this is uh, a great time to be in Buffalo. You know, I used to teach history and economics, and I wrote a course based on Mark Goldman's book called The Rise and Decline of Buffalo and Western New York. It was the economic history of Buffalo and Western New York. And we would chronicle the rise and decline of Buffalo's economy dating back to the 1901 Pan American Exposition. And at that time, Buffalo was the eighth largest economy in all of America. But even more importantly, all the great artists, the architects, you know, architecture as the biographer David McCullough teaches us, is the most unique art form because we live in it and amongst us. It defines us as a civilization. It defines us as a community. Lewis Sullivan, Henry Hobson Richardson, Frank Lloyd Wright, Daniel Burnham, Richard Upjohn, Louise Bethune, the first female architect in the United States. None of them were from Buffalo, they came to Buffalo because we were a city that said to these creative people, you can get your vision turned into something real. And they came and redefined this city. We are an arts and cultural community that has greater potential than we've realized thus far. My goal here is to help make the theater district a more inviting place. This lobby, this theater is magical. Those of you who have committed yourselves to it, day and night, people walk through here on a temporary basis, you are here every single day. The in-house restoration committee, the attention to detail, the beautiful ornate theater that this is, we owe a great debt of gratitude to all of you and the extraordinary work that you've done. So to the staff of the Shays, please join me in recognizing them. <laughs> So, let me just say this. The theater is about opening and closings. It's about the tragic and the magic. It's about the destination, but it's about the journey. And whenever theater dives deep into the darkness of human nature, the thing the theater never destroys is hope and the promise and the power of redemption. This is a story right in the midst of all of us about those things that we all value. So today's a day to give thanks for many things. I thank you for the opportunity that you give me and gave me to represent this extraordinary community in the United States Congress. We thank the people of Shays, the staff, the volunteers for the good work that they have done and continue to do only for this iconic cultural institution and the people that pass through it that they love. And finally, we give thanks to a good and generous nation, a good and generous nation that makes this day and all of our days possible. Thank you for being here. Shays has had the uh, great good fortune of having um, some great partners, uh, and I, I need to recognize and acknowledge the fact that the past 18 months has been um, an interesting one around here. And about a week ago, we announced that, uh, but for the Hamilton year, we had set a record of Broadway subscriptions of over 16,500. Uh, and that, in my view, and I know I share the board view, 
was due to the ongoing absolute commitment made by our senior staff and the people that work here, or staff that work here at Chase every day. So if you would please join me in thanking them for just <laughs> spectacular job. I said uh, earlier, and I've been saying publicly for a while now, uh, and, 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 and not really, uh, uh, really telling the truth, part of our goal is to stay out of Albert Nacholino's way. Um, our season this year has been spectacular. We'll continue to be so. If, uh, if, Albert, if what Albert tells me about the 24-25 season comes true, it will be even better uh, if that's possible. But we in Western New York and Shea specifically have the tremendous uh, honor to have Albert as our partner, as our director for our Broadway subscription, and he's here with us today. So if you would, Albert, please. I would not be Thank you, John. I'm, I'm thrilled to uh, be a part of this uh, announcement and celebration. Uh, it's a pretty significant event, and I'm also thrilled that I was allowed to participate in the process to help select our new president, Congressman Higgins. Or as you so graciously said to me today, you can call me Brian. Brian, I want you to know, in the words of Paul Simon, you can call me Al. <laughs> On behalf of myself and the entire Shea staff, we welcome you. We welcome you as president of this extraordinary institution. As Mayor Brown says so often and so beautifully in a documentary that was made by the American Theater Wing, Shea's is the anchor of the theater district. And it is. But it is more than that. It's the heartbeat of our urban core. It's the anchor, not only of the Urban Corps, but of the theater district, a theater district that is second to none. We have more theater companies in this community than any other city in upstate New York and in the Northeast. And we are part of that, and we're proud of it. But more importantly, we're proud of the legacy that's been built here. As you mentioned, the work of Tony Conti and Patrick Fagan before him, so that every single show on the road can come here. Now, they come here automatically. They want to be part of what we've built here. Brian made reference to our subscription, us. so did John. We're blessed with the success we've had here. It doesn't happen by accident. Western New York, the people of Buffalo, have embraced what we do, and they've put their arms around Shays. This is a magical place for sure, Brian. They have supported it, and they will continue to support it. But our job, your job, Brian, is to preserve it for the next generation, to continue the legacy all the hard work that's been done will need to go forward. More renovations, more restorations, the continuation of proper programming, and the building of audiences. We need to do that together, and we know, Brian, with what you have done already in our community, recognizing the assets that we have, with your vision and your support and your leadership over all these years, if you bring that to us and you help us continue on the foundation that everyone here in this room has worked so hard for, we are going to go a long way, and for generations to come, they will walk into this theater and continue to look up and say, boy, are we lucky to have Shays. Welcome and congratulations. The benefit of, of having great partners, uh, singularly, the city of Buffalo was and continues to be not only our landlord, but someone that we can go to uh, when we need help uh, in just about every facet of this operation. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm just thrilled that uh, the mayor could be here with us this morning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the mayor of the city of Buffalo, Byron Brown. <laughs> mayor. Thank you very much, John, and good morning, everyone. The selection of Congressman Brian Higgins as the president and CEO of Shays Performing Arts Center is a great decision. As John said, the city of Buffalo uh, proudly owns this great theater, and this is the crown jewel of the city's theater district. In fact, from my perspective as mayor of the city of Buffalo, I think the selection of Brian Higgins is an inspired decision. I want to congratulate John Dandies, the President of the Board of Trustees, 
Dr. Tony Vasquez, who led the search, and all of the members of the Board of Trustees, and Mr. Albert Nacciolino, uh, for your work on this search process. As we heard, not only was it a national search, it was an international search, drawing candidates from all across the world that were interested in leading this great facility. So we thank you for that and we congratulate you. I can say uh, Congressman Brian Higgins has long been one of the most effective legislative and elected leaders in our community, in the entire Western New York community. And I have been proud to partner with him, to collaborate with him on many issues and initiatives for this community. And one of the great strengths and assets that he brings is his collaboration, his ability to work with others, to engage others around the vision that he has. I can tell you that he has a deep love and passion for the arts. If you look at the body of his work and the depth and breadth of his work is extraordinary, is exceptional, but all through his service uh, in elective office, he has shown his passion and love for the arts. He understands that the arts equals economic development, that the arts is a building block of a strong community. So as mayor of the city of Buffalo, I am very pleased uh, with this decision. Uh, I am very thankful for the great deliberation of the Board of Trustees. And Brian, I know that you will keep this jewel in our community polished uh, and you will make the illumination of this jewel brighter than it's ever been. Congratulations. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, I said earlier that uh, how happy I was that uh, this selection was finally being made public. Uh, I need to recognize uh, uh, two of my colleagues uh, with whom uh, I think uh, we have spent uh, some portion of every day either on the phone or meeting as we were moving through this process. Uh, she just had to leave, but Laverne, Laverne Mosey Murphy and Jim Egan have joined me uh, as our executive committee over the past 18 months. So, Jim, thank you for everything <laughs> that you've done. We, um, I want to acknowledge as well uh, Bonnie Kane Lockwood, representing Governor Hochul, uh, who's here today. And one of our great friends in the state, uh, in the New York State Senate, um, at least for a little while, uh, and uh, that is uh, a great partner and a great supporter and a great friend, Senator Tim Kennedy. Senator, please. Thank you very much to John Dandies um, for your leadership of Shays for uh, so many years. Uh, what an honor it is for me to be here with you. Uh, those of you that know me uh, know that uh, I'm rarely of few words. Uh, so today I will do my best to keep it short, but if you could please indulge me as I speak about this incredible leader that Shays has the amazing honor of now calling the president of uh, Shays Performing Arts Center. Um, we all know Congressman Brian Higgins, and I welcome his family here you know, wherever the congressman has gone, his family's been right there by his side. And all the friends that are here in his room, who he considers family, I know this because I see myself as such. Um, it's the family and the friends of Congressman Brian Higgins that have really driven him to the successful leader that he has been for decades in our community. Um, we know that his work over the last 19 years in Congress has been second to none. Uh, we know that his work 
leading our community has led to a better city, a better region, a better state, and a better nation. And that is going to continue, no doubt, uh, in his role here at Shays, being a voice for the community. Uh, but you know, the thing that I love about the congressman is that he'll tell you he's just a kid from the neighborhood. He's someone who never forgot his roots, never forgot where he came from. And is, that is recognized today by the people that are in this room, people that have been lifelong friends of his and his family, again, that are here. He's always stayed humble. No matter what level of government he was at, the highest levels of government here in this great nation, moving around the international community, meeting with world leaders, he was always just that kid from the neighborhood. Somebody that recognized that who he was wasn't the title that he had, but rather the people that he served and the place he called home and what he delivered for our great community here. A true man of the people. You know, his fight for working men and women is also unparalleled, recognized today by the presence of Peter D. Jesus, the president of the Western New York AFL-CIO, and Tom Tucker, the head of the uh, Teamsters Theatrical Union that are here. Uh, thank you for both being here and all of the leaders that are here and recognized by the congressman himself in his incoming role by paying tribute and saluting the staff that run this place each and every day and make it as great as it is. You know, his vision for our community focused on working people stems from where he comes from as, again, his family, his father, his uncles, his extended family, their role in organized labor in our community, the son of a bricklayer. He'll tell you the story. He came up laying bricks with his brothers and his family, with his father and his uncles, and then one day he had a conversation with his father and said, Dad, I'm going to go in a different direction. And, you know, he saw some relief on his father. He thought his father was going to be upset. And he said, Dad, you know, I thought you weren't going to be happy with me. He said, son, you were a terrible bricklayer. <laughs> but, you know, it was those lessons in life that were taught to him as a young man that he carried on into his work in public service. You know, always fighting for our community. You know, when, when we think about the waterfront revitalization and the momentum that that carried into the revitalization of our entire economy in our region, back in 2005, as a freshman member of the United States Congress, in a room with people that the tables were set against him, with a junior senator, Hillary Rodham Clinton, who gave the freshman congressman his voice to tell our story and to fight to deliver for Buffalo and Western New York in a $279 million agreement that he walked out of that room with that day. That's because he has guts, that's because he has vision, and that's because he wasn't afraid to go into that room with the tables and the deck stacked against him and do what was right. And that's what he's gonna continue to do here at Shays. And you know, I had the honor of working as an intern in his office an unpaid intern. I should have taken his advice and gotten paid back in the day, but I was in college. I didn't know any better. I said, I'm going to show how really focused I am on this work. But looking at a rendering, his vision of our waterfront in Gallagher Beach, that first $500,000 he got to Gallagher Beach was the first investment in the waterfront in decades. And then when he became a congressman, that work was expanded. You know, whether he was in the council, whether he was in the assembly, whether he was in Congress, he has a storied career of leading. Brian Higgins will go down as one of the greatest Buffalonians in history. I'm proud to call my friend. We're all proud to call him our friend and a leader now in a different role. And as the curtain goes down on his role in the United States Congress and his storied career as a true public servant. The curtain goes up here at Chase, and we know the theater district will never be as great as it will be under his leadership as the president of Chase. Congratulations, Brian. We're looking forward to the next chapter in your life. We're so proud of you.
Thank you, Senator. We, um, we met earlier this morning with, uh, with the staff of Shays, and the uh, first and I, the predominant question was, um, well, what do, we, what do we call them? And, and I, I said, well, you know, you know, congressmen are congressmen for life. So technically, you know, he's still and will always be a congressman. And when Brian was asked the question, he said, please call me Brian, which I think tells you, speaks volumes. Um, and in so doing, Brian, if you would just join me for one more moment up here at the podium, please. Um, you'll uh, excuse the, um, the, the baseball analogy, but uh, I, uh, I can't get too far away from it. And so in, uh, in true baseball form, uh, this is the official passing of the mantle. Um, we don't have jerseys here at Shays, but we do have fleeces. Very nice. <laughs> so this is Brian's first official bit of swag. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Higgins, congratulations. Thank you. We are adjourned, everybody. Thank you. Tell us about the beginning of the process, when that hiring process started, and why you decided to throw a proposal for this. Well, I've been in Washington for 19 years, uh, fighting for this community, trying to make it a better place, both in terms of viability of it, but also the life quality of it. And I realized last year that I'm very rarely here. Uh, we're traveling 11 months out of the year. Uh, during the 12th month, I'm typically doing overseas travel. And I thought, you know, I could probably stay in Congress, uh, but I wanted to look at an institution like the Shades, which has a story place. And Buffalo's history is an iconic uh, cultural institution. If you look at all the growth in the West Coast economy over the past 10 years, it's resident arts, it's arts and culture. Uh, this is a probably has more cultural assets. It's architecture, both building and landscape, uh, than any other city in the nation. And I think that working with John. Who, by the way, is a lot of boards, but I'll tell you something, I've never experienced someone who is so deeply uh, integrated into the operations just to make sure, not getting in people's way, but liberating them to do their jobs on behalf of this uh, institution. But I'm looking forward to working with John. Uh, John has a track record in doing many, many things. Uh, we have a vision for the theater district. Uh, to make it more active, not just when the theater is operational, well, theater is plural, but when they're not, the district should be an extraordinary place in the city. Uh, John and I have talked about the fact that this lobby and this theater is magical. The process of getting the true of that magic is not magical. So doing things to look at new opportunities to expand uh, the patron base. Uh, right over the border is 15 million people that live in the most populated province of all of Canada. We have the Shaw Festival, we have uh, here in Buffalo, we have Buffalo Toronto Public Media. John knows, because of his leadership of the Buffalo Bisons, the viability of these organizations is about regionalizing the franchise. A lot of Canadians uh, go to the Bisons game for various reasons, Triple-A club of the Toronto Blue Jays. But when you look at cultural institutions, uh, expanding that offering to larger segments of the population regionally, I think is going to be critically important. How do you get that and I, think, I think Brian has been characteristically modest. The, uh, the, the process began, uh, Brian and I have been friends for a very long time. Uh, when, the, when the reports began to surface that he was under consideration for the Buffalo State position, I called him and said, I had no idea you were thinking about leaving Congress. Would Shays be an opportunity that you might think about? And that's really what began the conversation. And so we recruited Brian to, uh, to go through the process. And uh, obviously, uh, we made an unanimous in the selection. 
How do you get started on that vision of expanding what you just explained? Where do you get started and where do you find the funding? Well, it has, it has all the fundamentals. Uh, and I think that people want to give to uh, an institution like this. Uh, John and uh, the other board members are looking at making Shays more accessible to people. Uh, the handicapped community uh, that currently does not start building get around it because it's an old building. I think that's very important, but also instilling in people, individuals, in our business community, our non profit community, about the uniqueness of this building. I have to say, the thing about Buffalo is, people often, from the outside, think this is an extraordinary place. People have a tendency sometimes to take a lot of this for granted. I tell a story that I was backstage at a concert, a benefit concert, 10 years ago in Washington, D.C. Jackson Brown, Graham Nash, and Bonnie Raitt. And uh, I was backstage, Bonnie Raitt was standing there. It was a concert for one of my colleagues. I said, I'm John's colleague. I remember Congress from Buffalo, Western New York. She name checked the shades. She said that is among the most beautiful venues she's ever played in the world. In the world. And it's, I think, things like that that will serve as a basis from which to energize the community to give toward the betterment of the larger theater district, because that's a major component to downtown Buffalo revitalization. Uh, we have learned through my years in the council, federal historic tax credits, uh, monies to build the infrastructure. But here's what we notice. When you do the infrastructure improvements, for example, returning cars to Main Street, uh, right at this block, private sector investment follows. It's not coincidental. It is a cause and effect relationship. And everywhere you go, for every dollar you spend in public dollars, you generate three to four to five, in the case of Ohio Street, seven dollars of private sector investment that follows. So I think making the argument, sometimes it's really about how the argument is presented in a factual, fact-based way that is also clear and compelling about what the overall benefits are. The mayor wants downtown Buffalo to, to thrive. Uh, the county executive wants downtown Buffalo to thrive. And because Shays is such an important institution to downtown Buffalo in the theater district, it's a pretty good place to start. How mayor, don't, you think, don't you think politics and the theater are related? They are. I will tell you, you know, Oscar Eustace, who runs the public theater in Lower Manhattan, Astor Place. He lectures on this. And he says that the, that the art form of democracy is the theater. Because they were both born in the same place. Sixth century uh, Athens, Greece. And in fact, the theater provided the basis, the fundamental understanding of what democratic government would be. How? There was an actor and a 6th century uh, Latin tragic poet uh, by the name of Thespis, uh, from which the word Thespian comes from. And what he introduced to the stage is dialogue. Before that, there was only one person basically spewing their opinion about things. But when he did that, it created the idea that the collision of ideas with the emotional muscle of empathy is if you believe in democracy, you have to believe that. That's what our democratic system of government is based on. Uh, most political arguments are arguments about partial truths. We need people that disagree with us to correct for our own errors. So it goes back, and as I said, Judge, you know, I was trying to make that nexus, that connection, and I had to go back to my evolutionary roots of 2,500 years ago. As this was floating around, uh, the theater and the political communities for several months. How eager were probably the both of you to make this announcement and what had to get in line to get here today and actually make it? But the record showed that it didn't take 15 votes. <laughs> yeah, <it's not. laughs> but but we, uh, we were very anxious to do it, not only because the staff needed a hands-on person to come here, but it was really going through the political process uh, and Brian can explain what will happen now relative to a congressional resignation, a real appointment and election and all the rest of that. 
we were very, and I particularly, along with my board colleagues, couldn't wait for this day to come. When do you expect to start? Uh, first week in February. And I just needed to tie, you know, some projects that we've been working on. Uh, I'll resign from Congress. Uh, the governor will call a special election, which will be held within 70 to 90 days. Uh, we'll call the next special election. Uh, but as Jen said, I mean, all of the dysfunction in Washington, and I'll tell you, this <laughs> has something to do with the decision that I made earlier this year. Uh, when we hit 15 rounds of votes, uh, we were just in Washington for 11 weeks straight, basically waiting around for my colleagues on the other side to get uh, the votes, and they wouldn't tell you anything. So we're real, literally waiting for something to happen. So I'm gone 11 weeks. John wanted to make this, this announcement earlier, but we I mean, have to be physically present to be able to do it. Which this this so day occurred about a month ago. Yeah. And, and subsequent you know, days between it. We just couldn't get a day where he was not going to be in Washington or needed to be there. Are we're going to stop you there. One, one more question. Under the circumstances of the previous president leaving, uh, fostering employee relations, staff relations here, how important is that in, in your new position? Well, that was top of mind to John Davis. You know, this group, I know what I read. And we met with the staff earlier. Uh, John has been consistent throughout the process. The first thing we have to do before there's an announcement is meet staff. Uh, I've met with senior staff several times. We met with uh, staff and some volunteers earlier today. Uh, look, my, my governing philosophy will be consistent with my administrative philosophy here. And that is everybody needs to be respected. Uh, everybody uh, needs to be their authentic self without fear or apprehension. And uh, we will build, John's going to insist on this, because he has throughout this process, uh, 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 an inclusive, uh, heard, and seen uh, group of people who are extraordinary. They're here every single day. They work in a magical place. And, and finding a way to liberate them in a very positive sense to be who they are, to contribute what they have to contribute. I can't succeed as a leader without the full confidence, and I don't mean just words, I mean an emotional commitment to the vision that we outline for this extraordinary institution. And John is going to hold me to that. And we've talked about it many, many times, but that has always been top of mind to John Davis as a new chair and as a board member previously. And I will tell you that we did not ignore what had happened. We embraced that as, and said to Brian and to all the candidates, you need to understand what you're dealing with when you come here, and you need to be prepared to deal with our staff and create this, this, this environment of, of inclusion and, and positive and constructive uh, operation that I think Brian's going to bring to it. But rather than try and avoid it, we embraced it and said, this is something, this is a priority that you need to, to deal with immediately. Now, I want you to know one more thing. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm wrapping no, you no, up. No, that's okay. You're please. good. You're just doing your job. So we all have experiences here at, at the Shays. And my dad was on the Buffalo City Council in the mid-70s and voted to turn you know, the facility over to the Friends of the Shays. And then subsequent to that, I guess, the, the Shays O'Connell Guild. Uh, but there was a theater manager here by the name of Kurt Mangell. So uh, Bruce Springsteen, in 1978, opened, opened the Darkness at the, at the Town tour here at the Shays. So I was in the West Box with 15 of my closest friends. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, it's just a, a beautiful, beautiful place. There's so many productions here, and uh, this is a gift. Uh, that keeps on giving to the Buffalo West America community. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.